Hi, this is Vets TV. Uh, we're a program uh, dedicated to helping veterans and their families. My name is Bill Uren. I'm the veteran, and next to me is Jared Levison, who's an attorney who helps veterans. And next to him is our special guest, Marion Phillips. Uh, the reason we've asked her, and she's been kindly enough to come on our program, is because she's done some special research and work with uh, families. She herself uh, personally was home uh, during the Vietnam War, and her husband was a soldier off uh, fighting in the Vietnam War. And uh, she faced those problems alone. And uh, she's now put together a lot of research and is in the process of putting the book together about this particular subject, which I think most people don't think very much about. We talk a lot about veterans and what they were doing and soldiers and so forth, but I think it's important to know and to discuss a little bit about the family. Uh, and so my first question for Marion is to ask her, you know, how she got involved in this and what she's done and give us a little summary of the work that she's done in this particular area. Well, in 2003, when the war broke out in Iraq, we were faced with embedded journalists, a new word in my vocabulary, so that news came across immediately and the war was in our face. Um, as opposed to when uh, my former husband was in Vietnam and every night Walter Cronkite was in my living room and we got the body counts and that was essentially the news of war. Uh, I was first question for find the large box of letters which were the letters that I wrote, the letters that he wrote, and that everybody else wrote to him and I was the keeper of the letters. I hadn't been able to look at the letters before that. It was too painful. I, I just didn't want to do it, but I did it. I slid it open and out fell this card. Season's greetings. We are proud that you are fighting for us. We hope that you come back safely. We salute the flag every morning. And it was from a little girl in New Jersey, Donna, and I'm a Jersey girl, and that's where I spent uh, the war time because I was pregnant and had no other place to go. My job was over. So there are a few misspellings, but I, I'm sure at this point she would be able to spell it correctly. Um, I thought about this, and I thought about all the people who have gone to war and the letters come anonymously, uh, classrooms write, uh, and where were the women like me? Because we were not allowed to stay on base. We had something like 24 hours if we lived on base. We, we never did live on a base while um, he was in training. So I thought about taking a journey to find other women. I call it my naive journey because one, I didn't know how I was going to find people I never knew anyhow. And two, so what was I going to do? Well, of course I was going to write a book. Did I ever write a book before? No, but I was going to write a book. So everything about it was kind of very naive. What was the, when you began this journey, what was the first step you took? What was your first entree to begin to find the people you were looking for and how did they respond initially? When Where are the women? Well, truthfully, I believe it was Bill's wife, Marie, whom I knew who was my first wife. And I thought about achieve more in the process. Uh, I had also joined one of the local uh, veterans groups to the extent as an associate to the extent that I was eligible to be in because of having remarried and I couldn't belong to certain of the legions, uh, certain of the, excuse me, the auxiliaries. So um, 
it was tough. It was about five years. And first, how was I going to find five, then 10, then 12, then 15? And people kept networking. And Marie, who, buddy, well, I didn't know so many people lived around here. Um, and it happened till almost, well, more than 100, between 100 and 120 interviews that I did accomplish in the process. Um, not an easy task. It was a bigger job than I could ever have imagined. Tell us a little bit about some of the important lessons that you learned on the journey and what those lessons meant to you and in, in, in the process. Uh, I think acceptance of what people needed to say, women needed to say. Um, I prefaced all of my recordings and I did audio tape with permission, made it very clear and taped, you know, I'm going to audio tape this at you know, 120. It's, it's fine, yes, we do. Um, people told me things they said they never told anybody else and I would say well why not and the prevailing response was nobody ever asked. That why do you think that was? You know I could come up with all kinds of assumptions. Uh, one, we didn't serve in the war and I recognized that and we loved and lauded the men I was one of maybe two, at the most three divorces that I came in contact with in all that time. Uh, the other women lived with injuries, MIA, PO people, uh, and of course prevailing PTSD. Um, so. I think we were in a time of feminism when we were in the 60s. Bras were burned, right? Everybody was, the war was on everybody's tongue. And as time went by, it wasn't, and especially now. And I found it very important as I went on with the process to find women who have waited now, women who have waited multiple, multiple times, uh, which is not only the men, and of course women are serving now, and I, I don't want to leave that out to recognize that fact. There are many nurses, and nurses' names I believe are also on the wall of the 58,000 of the Vietnam Wall um, who served. Uh, but now women go and husbands stay home. Um, another lesson I learned, and I call them the backstories, the backstories of getting somewhere with plane delays, lost luggage, um, spending hours. At one point, there was one woman I spent four hours with listening. and. At the end of the whole process, she did not sign the release. Serving now, and I, I don't. First, that there are. Many, it was hard for me to accept it, but I, I hope very quickly I learned. And there were maybe half a dozen of these that people needed to talk. Women needed to tell somebody. And I was one of them, and I listened, and maybe it helped them move on to wherever they needed to go or wanted to go. So those are the lessons that stand out. We're going to return in just a moment. Um, we need to take a, a short break on Vets TV, and we'll return with Marion Phillips. When we come back, let's pick up with um, the need for certain spouses to talk and, and what resources there might be or not be 
uh, to allow them to have outlets or assistance with those matters. We'll be right back with more Vets TV on MCTV, Channel 15 in Eastern Maryland. Thanks for watching.